so damning when you're saying Hello. 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 We're going to get started. But before we get started today, I've got something I got to do that's very special. I want you all to just take a moment. Stand up, guys. You all hear me talk about my mentor all the time. Turn around, Captain. Yeah. That's the other not the other shoe. Put your finger on it, Captain. On which one? Right there. No, right there in front of you. That's the other. Down your head, your head. Cassie, over here. To right. That's John and I down the shoe. I'm going to take a moment today. Just a moment. Because if it had been for that man, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. If it had been for that man, I don't know if I'd even be living today. Because God used that man to help turn my life around. And I never been So if you would bow your head just for a moment. Lord Jesus, first I want to give honor to you, to the Father, and His Holy Spirit. And then, Lord, I want to thank you for bringing a man like John Shute into my life. I thank you for he and I got him. I thank you for John, who's like a dad I never knew. My devil was like my second mom. And now, Father, they're in heaven with you. But today, I want to acknowledge them before all those that are here. Because I do what I do. Because I saw him do what he did. Not only did he mention me, but he modeled what he taught me. So I thank you, Lord God, for his life. And I thank you for these men and women here today. And we ask your blessing upon our time. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Hallelujah. Just going around. <laughs> I got one wife, three kids.
and had a good time. Amen. 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 Long, long, be long before today, God knew we would be here. Amen. Amen. He's the architect of our destiny. And, and we're just blessed to have a God like him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's turn to somebody and say, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Because we're fulfilling destiny. Amen.
you know, it's just natural and airborne and all of that. Then, then sometimes sicknesses are, are from accidents, all right? Um, they, tell me, they tell me that the first responders that went out to the, you remember 9-11? Yeah. Because they inhaled all of that debris and smoke and all of that, a lot of them got cancer. Yeah. All right, so sometimes sickness is, is a result of an accident. It wasn't intentional. But then there's a third category. Sometimes sicknesses are spiritual. They are satanic attacks. Now, when they're natural, you can, you can get medical science. You can buy some stuff over the counter and work with that. Come on, come on now. If it's an accident, well, medical science can help, and then you can pray about it. Yeah. But when it's spiritual, right. it ain't going nowhere yeah. until you apply spiritual power. All right. All right. Yeah. Unfortunately, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ today has gotten so intellectual. Come on, come on, brother. Can I still talk to you? Yeah. Come on, come on talk to you. <laughs> Amen. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ has gotten so natural that we forgot that we are primarily a spiritual entity. All right. And our battle is not physical. Yes. Yes. And so the enemy is having a real good time because he realized that the church has no concept of the spiritual battle that we're in. No concept. In fact, today, I've noticed that a lot of our churches are built on managerial principles and not prayer. All right. Yeah. I just want a little bit of church in here. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. yeah. So, so, so we're building God's church on managerial principles, on our intellect. And so when the enemy comes, we have no clue so what to do. Because we, didn't, we, we, never, we never realized that... The whole thing was spiritual. That's right. That's right. So the enemy has been attacking and attacking and attacking. And, and the church of the Lord Jesus Christ have been spending valuable time and money trying to solve a spiritual problem through natural means. Come on, come on, brother. Come on. Come on. Talk about it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hear me today. Yeah. You're never going to solve a spiritual problem by a natural means. Yeah, yeah. If the problem is spiritual, it has to be solved spiritually. All right, right. When the enemy comes against you, he first evaluates you to see if you have any spiritual potency. Yes, sir. And when he realizes that everything about your Christianity is morality, yeah. is physical, he sees a great opportunity to attack. Oh, yeah. I'm letting you know right now that Maybe 90%, but well, I'm, I'm saying the bulk of the attacks in the church today yeah. is spiritual and not natural. Yeah. How is it possible that 50% of marriages in the church are going under? How is that possible? Come on, bro. Come on. How is it possible that you, in your right mind, stood before a minister and said, until death? Man, you were in your right mind when you said that. What happened? <laughs> the enemy realized that it was all talk. Yeah. No power. Mm -hmm. The enemy is not afraid of the name of your church. I don't care how long it is. Yeah. Yeah. The enemy is not afraid of the popularity of your bishop. Yeah. I don't care how many countries he's traveled to or yeah. how many continents. Yeah. The enemy is afraid of the believer who knows his authority in Christ. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And until we begin to rise up in the authority that Christ has given us, we stand to lose every time. Listen, let me just drop it on you real quick. I didn't want to do this. But you see all of these uh, uh, um, uh, um, alternative lifestyle going on around here? Yeah, yeah. You know, gays and lesbians yeah. and all of that? Wow. And the church has come to a place where we realize that we don't have the power to combat that. So we, we're finding excuses and saying, you know, some people are just like that. Yeah, yeah. Listen, God is smarter than that. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. God, God didn't make an error. Yeah. Think about it. 365 days in a year, every day the sun rises. Yes. Every day this earth is in rotation. Yes, sir. Every day creation operates exactly according to plan. How is it that God would have made the mistake to place a woman in a man's body? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, come, on. yeah come on, bro. <laughs> some spirit yeah. attacked somebody, and the church didn't have the answer. 
because we went on managerial principles and we went on natural and physical ideas rather than God's supernatural power. In the absence of God's supernatural power, we stand to lose how many times? Every time. Can, can, I, can I go on? Okay, so quickly, in the book of Revelation chapter 12, anybody got a Bible? Because I want you to know what I'm really, I'm really talking about. Revelation chapter 12, 7 to 12. I want you to see something real quick. Because I'm going to talk about healing and how you're going to get healing in a minute. Revelation chapter 12, and verse 7 to 12. The Bible says, and there was war in heaven. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought. And the Bible said, and the dragon and his angels fought. So this is why I want to bring to your attention. If the enemy was brave enough to attack the headquarters of God, make no mistake, he's not afraid to attack you. That's the word, Pastor. This is God's throne. The Bible says the heavens are his throne. The earth is just his footstool, but heaven is his throne. That's where he operates from. If the enemy had the audacity to attack heaven, make no mistake, he's not afraid of you. And so a lot of times we think that if we ignore the battle, it's going to go away. It ain't going nowhere. Something strange happened in Genesis chapter 6 that I want to bring your attention to. The Bible says that the sons of God, and the sons of God is a title for angels. Yeah, you remember yeah. in the book of Job? Yeah. Now there's a day when the sons of God came before God to yes, and see. Alright, so it's a title for angels. The sons of God, the angels, saw the daughters of men. The Bible says, and they came down and took women. But the Bible says that the children that came out of that ungodly and unwholesome relationship became giants. You know, sometimes we criticize on uh, um, um, the, the children of Israel when they told Moses, we can't take that land, we look like grasshoppers. Yeah, the Bible says the last of the giants that was killed, his name was Og, he was king of Bashan. The Bible says the dude was 13.5 foot. Yeah. He made Devin look like a baby. Amen. Third, they found his bed and Israel kept his bed as a relic. The guy was 13.5 foot and I, I think he was one of the smaller ones. Yeah, right. These, these children grew out of proportion. Yeah. All right, watch this. So God says, my spirit is not going to thrive with this no more. I'm, I'm bringing it to an end, right? Remember that? Yeah. So, so Noah's flood came and drowned up everybody, right? Yeah. Okay. According to Hebrews 9 and 27, all right, the Bible says, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, Hey, I don't care what you believe, believe in Hare Krishna, what you ain't coming back here after death. Yeah. All right. So, so after death, you go to meet your Lord. Yeah, yeah. Whoever your Lord is. Yeah. All right. You go to meet your Lord. All right. But watch this. That scripture refers to people, humans like me and you. So after the flood, all of these guys that were giants and, and, the, and the hybrids born out of these, these demon spirits, they could not go to the Father, yeah. and the time was not yet to go to hell. All right. So guess where they were? They started roaming the earth. Yeah. Looking for people to inhabit. There you go. Okay, so this is what Jesus said. Luke 11 and 24. Anybody got that? Luke 11? I want to show you something. Luke 11 and 24. This is Jesus' testimony. The church needs to see this. Luke 11, 24. Yeah. Brother Devin, you can read that real quick? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, mm -hmm. he walking through dry places, seeking yeah. rest. Hold on. What is he seeking? Rest. rest. He cannot find rest because there's no rest for an evil spirit. He, doesn't, he can't go to God. He can't even have it heaven. He ain't got no rest. So the dude said, since I can't find rest, what I'm going to do? Finding none, he said, I will return into my house uh -oh. which I came out. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Yeah. 
Hold on right there. When he comes back to the person that he got out of, yeah. and he sees that a preacher has come to town and maybe minister to you, and, uh, and, and you, you, you give your life to the Lord, and everything looks fine, but you did nothing with your salvation. I hear you. You didn't work on it. I hear you. So he comes and he sees it clean. It's clean, all right? Yeah. But the problem is not filled with power. Yeah. So guess what he does? Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Okay, so seven plus one when I was in school used to be eight. I, I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. All right, so now they're eight, not one anymore. Yeah. All right? Uh huh. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Did, did you see that? That's Jesus' testimony. So even if you didn't believe what Paul wrote or John, this is what Jesus wrote. Jesus said that the spirit goes and tries to find his brethren and he, he can't find any, so he comes back. Now, Revelation 7 and verse 3 says, in that battle, in that battle, Satan was able to pull a third of the angels. A third, a third. Now, in your mind, think. If there were a trillion angels, and I believe there are more because the Bible says we come to an innumerable company of angels. We can't number them. But say for an example, if there were a trillion, right? A third of a trillion is what? Is 330 billion. How many people, how many people are on the earth? Yeah. About six, seven billion. Think about six billion going against 330 billion. Think about it. You see how infested the earth is? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. You cannot afford to live here in the absence of spiritual knowledge and yeah. power. That's you right. cannot That's afford good. that. Right. Yeah. All right. So the Bible says in Luke 11 that these guys are trying to inhabit people. Listen, these guys are not trying to visit you. They're trying to live. <laughs> They're not trying to visit. This is not, you know, um, you know, one of those social calls. They're going to visit and then go back home. No, they're going to live. That's why you cannot afford. I'm going to just do this quickly, right? You cannot afford to go to a hotel room. Maybe you're in town for a convention, or, or you travel to California for some, and you went into a hotel room and you slept. You cannot afford not to be spiritual because those spirits are going to be around and looking at. Well, I think that's a good sister I can go home with. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh, or you're making these social calls at the club. On Friday, then going to church on Sunday. Well, that's how come those spirits got in the church. <laughs> because they're following you home. Let, listen, you cannot have the boots of the enemy and ask him to stay away. If you got his goods, he's going to follow his goods. He has a right. There you go. Right. You, you, still, you still with me? Yeah. So Jesus right. said, this guy doesn't want to come and visit. He wants to come and live. A lot of the time, come back to healing. A lot of the time, the sicknesses that we're experiencing is a direct result of the presence of an evil spirit. Oh, I guarantee you that if the spirit gets out, the sickness will leave. Yeah. There you go. Amen. Yep. I've seen it just I've seen it just too many times. Too many times. I've seen I've seen it in my own body. I've seen it, I've seen it in my in my wife's body. There's a time that I was spending all night and praying and crying, talking to the Lord for Tanya. And one night the thing occurred to me and said, Hey, the, those spirits don't care about you crying. They, they care about the authority. So I just woke up one night and went over to Tanya's side of the bed. I don't know why she thinks I went over to her side. But anyway. <laughs> I laid my hands on her and I said, you spirit of infirmity, I command you to get out in the name of Jesus. And Tanya hasn't had that problem since. Amen. 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 I, I, I didn't listen to me. Since, since 2013, I haven't, I haven't seen the inside of a, of a doctor's office. I, I, I am well. I am just well. Amen. I found the secret. I found the secret. All right. There is a spiritual aggression against us, and it can only be combated by spiritual force. Uh -huh. All right, so let me talk to you about healing real quick in the next five, five minutes, and I'll be done. There are two kinds of healings that the body hasn't noticed. One healing is, is, is manifested through the gift of healing. All right, in Corinthians, there are nine spiritual gifts. One of those gifts is healing. Another is prophecy, another is tongue, but there, there are nine of them. One is healing. 
Sometimes a healing evangelist or some preacher comes to town and he's clothed in that authority and that anointing. And, and he lays hands and he heals and sometimes he doesn't even have to lay hands, right? And people get healed. The body has made the mistake to go after that guy. So we heard he was in Fort Worth, we're going to Fort Worth. You know, he's in California, I'm going to buy me a ticket, I'm going to California. What we didn't realize was that the Bible says that when that gift is in operation, is as the Spirit wills. Is as the Spirit will. Check out all of those gifts in, in, in Corinthians. At every one of them, prophecy, as the Spirit wills. Ask the Spirit will work in a miracle. Ask the Spirit will. That's, that's right. Faith. Ask the Spirit will. So all of those gifts happens if God is doing a particular thing at a particular time. Amen. That is the first aspect. And you know what I noticed? I noticed that that gift is heavily in operation among young believers. Now, when I when I got attacked with cancer. One of the things that the Lord took, the third time the Lord visited me, I asked him, I said, Lord, I've seen you do miracles instantly. So why am I not being healed instantly? And the Lord said to me, he said, when I heal instantly, I'm making a statement. I'm saying, I am the Lord. I am your healer. I am your deliverer. He said, but when I do it gradually, I'm teaching you a lesson. He said, now you need to open up your ears and learn. I said, teach me, Lord. I need to learn some things. So he started teaching me how, how, how to receive healing as a mature believer and not just an unbeliever that visited a meeting. Because the unbeliever needs to know, I am the Lord. I am your God. I'm your healer. But you who have been saved for the last seven to eight years, <laughs> you already know that. Now you need to understand the inner workings of God. Amen? Amen. So the first healing is for those, those, a lot of times, a lot of times, for those young believers who need to know that God is a healer. Come over to us who've been in the body for the last 30, 40 years. You need to understand how this works. This unfolds in two patterns. You all ready? The first pattern is the vessel who is attempting to pray must be a consecrated, sanctified vessel who has harnessed the powers of God. Amen. Amen. See? So we got empty handed preachers laying hands on. Mm. Can I, can Come I, on, make I, it bright. Smokey, can I be free? I'm make it bright. Amen. You don't feel bad about me, right? All right. So you got some preachers who going to spend their entire week feasting. Just, I mean, having a good time. And then you have a service, you're going to get serious and say, I'll, I'll pray for you in the name of... Hey, the enemy don't, don't care about that. That's right. The enemy can tell if the person praying has talked away and spent some time with God. You see, because you're not going to do, you're not going to do anything without God. The power, yeah, thank you. The power is not, is not your, you didn't manufacture it. It came from Almighty God. And you got to stay connected to Him for that power to be transmitted through you. Amen. Remember Jesus said, until, unless you stick with the vine, you can't do nothing. Look at the person next to you and say, stick with the vine. Stick with the vine. So you got, you got a preacher then, and the body of Christ keeps looking at this thing and saying, how come, how come we're, we're not getting healed? Well, He prayed for us. He had the right stand and everything. He had everything. So how come we didn't get healed? Well, that preacher needs to take some time, take some time in the presence of the Lord. That's where it happens. Take some time in the presence of the Lord. Listen, your pa the pastor who doesn't spend quality time in the presence of the Lord, you got no business following that dude. Amen. Yeah, because this is not an intellectual journey. If it was an intellectual journey, I'll get one of the professors at the university. It's a spiritual journey. This guy needs to be spiritual enough to handle some of the situation that I'm going through. Because you're not all natural. Alright, so the first element of a healing is you want somebody who has talked away and is able to convey that power. Remember Jesus is going to Jairus' house? And the Bible says that this lady came and touched him. And Jesus said, something came out of me. Remember that? Yeah. So he's carrying an amount in him. And he knows when it's depleted. Amen. Yeah. Okay. 
The second part of a healing is the person receiving the healing needs to understand that this is a spiritual thing and not a natural thing and therefore put themselves in a spiritual position to receive it. If God came to visit you tonight, this evening, tomorrow, or next week, and he shook your hands, he will not be shaking your physical hands because God is a spirit. So if you stretch out your physical hand, you're going to miss it. Remember the lady that Jesus talked to? And she said, well, y'all say that um, in Jerusalem, and Jesus said, no, 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 no. It's not Jerusalem. It's not, it's not this mountain. It's in the spirit. So you can contact God on 635 Monday morning on your way to work. You don't even have to be in the church. I, I like what Smokey said. God did not die for us to go to church, to join the church. He died for us to become the church. Amen. Oh, yeah. Smokey, I, I, never, I never forget that. He died for us to become the church. You can manifest the church in your car, in your shower, in your bedroom. So it has to be spiritual and not natural. All right? So a lot of times, the, the reason why you bow your head and close your eye is, is an act of shutting off the physical world so that you can tap into the spiritual realm. But a lot of times, we close our eyes and bow our heads and say, preacher, okay, do what you got to work the magic. Yeah. That's not how it works. It works because you realize that something spiritual is about to happen and you adjust yourself spiritually. All right? Now, I have found out that one of the most spiritual things we can do to help the situation is to have the musicians know that this is what we're going to be talking about before time. Like I didn't tell you. All right? So now, the musicians will carve out a set of songs that impact the atmosphere. I see. So we create a spiritual situation, and then we get a spiritual-minded preacher and spiritual-minded people. I guarantee you that once your three components are in place, you will see miracles like never before. Hallelujah. Like never before. The problem is, we got a natural guy up here who feels good about himself and all the jewelry he's wearing. Uh, 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 then you got a, 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 a musician out there who thinks that he's the best keyboard player in town and he's angry if, if you didn't let him play what he wants to play. And you got people who are spectators who just amazed seeing what's going to happen. So all three components are out of whack and no miracles. No miracles. So whenever we're ready, think about it, pray about it. Whenever we're ready, Smokey's going to have your musicians carve out, select specific worship songs, songs that enhance the atmosphere. He is here to meet your lead, to lift you up and let you stand. Remember that song? Those, 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 those kind of songs, you know? I am the Lord that he lived thee. Those kind of songs, think about it. So, so, so we carve out that atmosphere, and once that atmosphere is, is, is hanging here, then we get an anointed preacher. Snooky stands up here, and he doesn't even have to pray a long prayer. Because you came from home expecting something to happen. I'm telling you. The spirits of cancer, I believe cancer is just, it's just a demon spirit that, 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 that's, that's hanging around and he hasn't been asked to leave in the proper way. We haven't put enough prayer power, you know, spiritual power on that demon. When we manifest that power, he will willingly leave. He wouldn't even argue. My word to you today, set the three components in order and the miracles will flow like we never did. All right, Brother Paul, that was good. Give him a get a lot of another hand, what you please. Right. You know, to listen to our brother and think about this. We don't come expecting. Because we live in a culture where we have more confidence 
and the doctors and the pharmaceutical drug they give us that's destroying us. There's nothing wrong with pharmaceutical drugs, don't get me wrong. But we have a power in us that has not been activated because we haven't had the faith to believe. And what happened is, last week we had a problem with where we're here. If you get a group of people who will start seriously believing that God will do what he said he's going to do, and hold each other accountable, and encourage one another in that faith journey, we'll see God do great things. You see, God is not waiting. God is God of the power of the belt. We just got to tap into it. You see, one of the things is this. When we get so smart, we can explain God without getting to know God. See, I would rather hear a preacher that can't hardly read, but he's had experience with God than to have a man with a PhD. You see, because the PhD is based on his intellectual learning. The man who knows God. My grandfather was a man that knew God. When my grandfather prayed, he believed that God was going to move because he believed he had that relationship with God. And I saw him living. And for all, for so many times I wonder, today, I pray a lot like my grandfather. My grandfather didn't pray like the average man. He talked to God like God was his friend. He would say, God, this is your son, bud, down here on earth. God, I borrowed money from the bank to buy seeds, fertilize, and now God, I plowed the field, I planted the seeds, and now God, if you don't do your part, me and your name, both gonna be murdered at that bank. <laughs> well, I can't do, I can't bring rain, God, only you can bring rain. So if you withhold the rain, the crop will not, will not grow, and we won't have a harvest, and I can't pay the note at the bank. Then he would get out on the porch and he would sit out there with that big old black Bible and he would start reading it and singing hymns. Sometimes within an hour or two we got rain. Sometimes it may be two or three days, but whenever that rain came, he couldn't wait to start praising the thing. Because God did what he knew only God can do. Amen? So when you believe that God can do what only God can do and act on that, we'll see God do that. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus yes. Christ, we thank you for your word that has come forth today about healing. And Lord, we know that the power of healing is in your hand. We know, God, we like to see your word says, seek me not for healing, but seek me because I am the healer. Yeah. And Lord, when we seek you and get in your presence, we find your supernatural power connected to our weak bodies, and we enter down by that power. And that power delivers us from sickness, it delivers us from diseases. It happens, Lord, it heals us, and it sets us free from sin. Thank you, Lord God, for you who have started the good work that we can trust to finish. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Greet somebody before you leave. I'm not going to